Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to create an energy ball inside of Adobe After Effects. Now this is going to be an intermediate tutorial. We will be using quite a lot of layers, different effects and pre-composing as well as simple expressions and if any of that sounds rather unfamiliar to you I highly recommend that you do go and check out some of the more basic tutorials that I have on my channel first. But now, before I talk your ears off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects and this time I am not going to start out with an empty composition. However, my setup is really nice and easy so let me take you through it. I have a composition here with a tutorial.mp4 file at the bottom and as always if you do want to follow along you will find a download link to this file in the description of the video. The clip itself is just a short video of Walter getting mad, spawning an energy ball and then throwing it in my face and I've already baked this disintegration effect into the footage. If you want to know how I created this disintegration effect just leave me a comment down below and I can create a separate tutorial for that. The other things I've done in my composition, I've applied some simple color grading with an adjustment layer just to give it a little bit more of an interesting greenish tint. And I've tracked Walter's left hand with a simple motion track and I've tracked his right hand and I've created another null object right in the center here where we can then attach the energy ball to up until he throws it in my face. But the very first thing we need to do is we need to create this growing energy ball that Walter is spawning. For that, let's create a new composition and do note that I'm actually set up to use 32 bits per channel and I highly recommend that you do the same simply because the effect we're going to create is going to contain a lot of glow and shine and gradient style effects. So using 32 bits per channel is going to be very beneficial. But now let's create a new composition. I am going to call this one Energy Ball Comp. And because a ball is usually square, you may be tempted to set your composition to a square aspect ratio. But the CC sphere effect, which we are going to use to create this effect, doesn't quite work with square resolution. So keep this at something standard like 1920 by 1080. 10 seconds for the duration should be more than enough. And then simply hit OK. Here we are in a brand new empty composition. And let's start out by creating that undulating energy effect that we want for our energy ball. For that let's create a new solid layer. I'm going to call this one sphere noise and the color doesn't really matter but black is pretty cool so let's simply hit OK and let's apply a turbulent noise effect to this layer. If you want you can also use a fractal noise. There isn't really a right way to create an energy ball. There's so many different options and so many different ways to create a similar effect. So just use whatever makes sense to you. I'm going to use turbulent noise. So let's apply that to our sphere noise layer. And in the settings for the turbulent noise effect, I'm going to change my fractal type from basic over to turbulent sharp. And I'm also going to invert it. This kind of gives you these more energy like trails. But if we're scrubbing through our composition, it, just a static boring image. So let's alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the evolution to add an expression. And in the expression editor I'm simply going to type time star 500. Let's click outside of the expression editor and let's scrub through our composition and you now have this undulating energy style effect. However I want this effect to look a little bit more webby, a little bit more energy like. It's a little bit too random. For that let's search for and apply the CC glass effect to our sphere noise layer and by default nothing at all will happen. So let's come into the settings for the CC glass effect and expand the surface tab and let's change the bump map from sphere noise which is just the current layer over to none and you'll suddenly see all these weird glassy reflection-y bumps happening which is kind of cool but not quite what we want. Instead let's again in the settings change this displacement from plus 100. Let's just lower it and keep lowering it negative to maybe almost negative 200. So we're creating this really organic-y looking webby energy pattern. 
Feel free to play with the light and the shading options for the CC glass effect, but if we scrub through, I think this actually already looks pretty cool. Let's zoom back out and you may notice that we just have a screen full of noise, which is not what we want. We want a sphere-like structure. And for that, you guessed it, let's apply the CC sphere effect to this layer. And there you go, it is now a sphere. And if you scrub through, you can see the effect applied to the sphere. Now let's bump the radius up a little bit. I still wanna leave a fair amount of space around the sphere for glow and other elements that we are going to add later, but I think that's actually not too bad. And you may notice that the light seems to predominantly come from the left side, so the right side of the sphere is a little bit dark. In order to fix that up, simply come into the CC sphere effect and expand the light settings. And on the light height, let's change this from 40 to exact 90, so the light is kind of coming straight at the sphere and everything is evenly lit. And now we have the base pattern for our energy ball created. Next, you may notice that our energy ball is always the same size, but if you check out the clip of Walter and me, Walter is actually spawning the ball from his hands and I think it should probably start out really nice and small and kind of grow in size, grow in size, grow in size until he throws it in my face. So let's return to our energy ball comp and let's make the sphere kind of grow out from nothing over the course of maybe four to five seconds. As with everything, there's plenty of different ways to achieve this. Let's collapse the layer for now and I'm going to use a mat, but I'm not actually going to use a track mat. I'm going to go a slightly different route because I feel it's just going to be a little bit more flexible. So first thing I want to do, let's create a new solid layer. Let's call this layer sphere mat and hit OK. And let's grab the ellipse tool. And let's draw a round circular mask right in the middle of this layer to cover the entire sphere and then some. So fairly big. Um, yep, that's not too bad. Let's open up the mask settings and maybe I'll have the energy ball grow over the course of four seconds. So let's come to exactly four seconds and enable the stopwatch icon on the mask path. And let's go back to zero. And now I wanna scale this mask down and I'm going to hold down control and shift so the mask remains in the center of the composition and it scales down uniformly. And let's scale this down to pretty much nothing. So now the mask just appears and kind of covers up the entire sphere. Don't worry, we're going to invert this in a second, but the edge is just a little bit too harsh. So I'm going to increase the mask feather to maybe around the 100 mark or so. So that's actually not too bad, but the mat still feels a little bit too even and we are trying to create a fairly organic and noisy effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the turbulent displace effect and apply that to the sphere mat layer. To give this noise a little bit of animation, let's alt click onto the evolution property. And in the expression editor, let's go with time star 100. If we scrub through this now, you can kind of see it spreads a little bit more organically. I think the displacement is a bit too strong. So maybe I'll lower the amount to about 30. That's not too bad. So there it is. And there the mat spreads over the sphere. Let's come back collapse our layer and I'm actually going to grab my sphere mat layer and drag it to the bottom of the composition. And I'm going to disable the visibility because we don't actually need it. And now I'm actually going to pre-compose this layer. I'm going to call this layer sphere mat comp and make sure to move all attributes into the new composition and then simply hit okay. Now, because I am actually on the latest version of Adobe After Effects, I technically don't have to pre-compose this layer anymore. But for all of you who are still on early versions of After Effects, let's pre-compose it so you won't have any issues following along with this tutorial. And now that we've pre-composed it, let's apply this mat to the sphere. Yes, technically, you could simply drag this new composition above the sphere noise layer and change the track mat option over to alpha mat. And there you go. However, I'm not going to do that. Let's undo all of that and let's drag this layer back to the bottom. I'm instead going to use a set matte effect. I just feel it's going to be a little bit more flexible and it's going to allow us to use this matte on layers where we don't want to cover up a glow or a shine or some other elements that we want to extend past the area of the matte. Therefore, the way I'm actually going to apply this matte is to reselect my sphere noise layer come into the effects and presets panel and let's search for the set matte effect. And you will find this effect in the channel group and let's apply the set matte effect to our sphere noise layer. And I'm actually going to drag it before my CC sphere. So I'm just going to drop it right there. And I'm going to change my take matte from 
over from the sphere noise layer, which is just the current layer, to my sphere mat comp. And now it's going to apply this layer as a track mat via this effect. And you will not have this drop down in earlier versions of After Effects, but this is why I technically didn't have to pre-compose it, but I'm just going to leave this on source. Don't worry about this for now. Should all work just fine, no matter which version of After Effects you're on. And now if you rewind and play this back, cool, we now have our energy ball appear. However, it does look a little bit boring, like it's being revealed by a mat, which, well, it is, but I do want this to look a little bit more interesting and organic. For that, I'm actually going to animate the brightness of the turbulent noise effect, so it starts out really weak and frilly and kind of fills in as that energy ball develops. For that, let's come to four seconds where our energy ball is fully formed, reselect the sphere noise layer and come up into the turbulent noise effect, and let's set a keyframe on the brightness and the contrast, and let's come back to the very beginning and I might temporarily disable the set matte effect just so I can see my entire energy ball. And I'm actually going to jack up the contrast and lower the brightness. So I'm kind of ending up with these really weak strings and just darkening this even more. So what I want to have happen is kind of just that it appears slowly. So it kind of comes in there, so it kind of organically forms and comes back in. I might actually bring this up a little. I think it's a little bit too dark now. So it kind of forms and then slowly fills in. And now if I re-enable the set matte effect, we should combine those two effects. Cool, that is looking so much better. It just doesn't have that flat matte reveal effect anymore because we combined a number of different layers and varying effects to add a little bit more detail to it all. Next, I'm still finding my energy ball looking a little bit flat, so I'm actually going to create a second layer of noise and kind of overlay it just to give it a little bit more volume, just look a little bit more interesting. For that, let's simply duplicate the sphere noise layer and I'm going to call this layer noise highlights. Let's also change the blend mode from normal over to add and this will make your entire energy ball just a bit brighter because right now both of those noise patterns are exactly the same. So what I want to do on my noise highlights, I want to come up into my turbulent noise effect. Let's expand the transform properties and this offset turbulence allows you to kind of shift this effect off a little bit. So I'm actually going to shift this over, might actually also scale this up just a little bit. So we have kind of two layers of noise on top of each other. And what I might also do, let's press U to reveal the keyframes and press K to jump to the next keyframe. And let me disable the bottom sphere noise. I'm um, actually on this top one, I kind of want this to be a little bit more contrasty. So I'm going to push in a bit more contrast and maybe lower the brightness a little bit. I just want like a few really, really strong streaks standing out in the end. So I'm just going to tweak these a little bit. Now if I re-enable the base layer, I kind of just have these bright little tracks just over the top of it. So that actually just looks a little bit more interesting. So it looks a little bit more volumetric, just like there's a little bit more going on with that effect. And if you are looking for something slightly different, you can always come back onto your base sphere noise and then the turbulent noise effect. Just change the fractal type or the noise type from let's say soft linear maybe to block. So you're kind of getting a little bit more of like a digitally feel and obviously you can kind of keep tweaking this. I think I'm just gonna keep it on soft linear for now. I kind of do like this effect. Let's rewind our composition and play back what we have so far. Cool, and that is actually looking really nice. Next, let's add a little bit of shine so that it looks like there's energy radiating from the core of this energy ball outwards. For that, let's simply duplicate the noise highlights layer. And again, this is going to make it even brighter. Let me actually rename this layer to noise highlights shine. And depending on what you have available, if you have trap code shine, that is a great effect to apply to this layer. If you don't have this effect, you can also apply a CC radial fast blur effect. So let's do that. And in the settings for this effect, make sure you change the zoom from standard over to brightest. So only the brightest area of this layer are going to start shining and then you can kind of jack up the amount and you're kind of going to create this really cool shining effect. And what's great about this setup is that if you scrub through this, you will see the shine animate. So you're kind of getting these really, really bright sparks just where the brightest parts of these highlights sit. So that's actually looking really, really cool. Just kind of forming and building up this energy ball. So that's really nice. Let's play this back. Cool, that looks really nice. 
One thing that I'm still finding lacking with this energy ball though is that once it's fully developed, I would imagine that in the core it's got this really hot piece of energy right in the center. And right now it's kind of a little bit fluffy because the energy kind of moves about everywhere. I want something that's really nice and solid to tell me that in the core of this ball there's a huge amount of energy. We can achieve this by adding a light flare and a little bit of flickering right into the center of this energy ball. And for that, let's again create a new solid layer. I'm going to call this one Light Flare and let's hit OK. And let's go into the Effects and Presets panel and search for the Light Flares effect. The Light Flares effect that I'm going to use is the Light Flares effect from the Ignite Express plugins pack. You can download this pack for free. Again, I'm going to put a link to that down in the description of the video. So you should have this effect available once you've installed the plugins. So let's simply apply the Light Flares effect from the Ignite plugin pack to the Light Flares layer. And flare type, I actually want to change this over to anamorphic streak. So this gives us this really hot streak and I'm going to place that right in the center of my composition. And let me also change the blend mode on the light flare layer over to add. So now we've got this light flare sitting right in the middle of our energy ball and it's actually looking really nice. I do find the lens flare just a little bit too wide though. So what I'm going to do in the light flash effect, let's expand the raise option. And I think I might actually reduce the length scale to maybe 0.7. And I might actually do the same for the width. I don't want it to be too prominent. So that looks a little bit better. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to animate this lens flare to kind of come in with this energy ball. So at probably about three seconds in, just want to have this lens flare appear just a little bit earlier. I think that actually looks all right. Let's enable the stopwatch icon for the intensity on the light flares effect. And let's come to the beginning and let's crank this down to zero. So now we have this energy ball kind of appear and come out of nothing. And that actually looks pretty cool. Maybe what I want to do is I might actually jack the scale up. I'm finding the center is a bit too low. So maybe I'm going to jack this up to about a thousand. Yeah, that, that looks all right. But I think I now I need to reduce the length scale a little bit. Feel free to tweak this in any way you want. That actually doesn't look too bad. So I've got almost a thousand on the scale and 0.3 and 0.4 on the length and the width scale. So I think that actually gives it quite a bit of power right in the center. Mm, I feel that's probably a little bit too much actually. I think I might lower the scale and adjust the length and the width scale properties just a little bit. But again, feel free to tweak this to your liking. Cool. Finally, the last thing I want to do with this lens flare is just add a little bit of flicker so it seems a little bit unstable. And for that, I'm going to alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the intensity. And let's add a little expression. I'm going to type wiggle, open round bracket, 8 comma 0.2 and close round bracket. So I'm kind of going to randomize and kind of jiggle this property, this intensity property around by a value of up to 0.2, eight times a second. So now if you scrub through this, you should see, yeah, can you see how the flare just jitters and just adds a little bit of instability and just intensity to this energy ball. I really like this effect. Let's once again collapse all of our layers and next let's add a little bit of energy diffusion to the outside of this energy ball. And by that I mean imagine the surface of the sun where you have a lot of sun flares because there's so much energy on the surface that it's kind of being radiated outwards. And I kind of want to add the same effect to our energy ball. For that I'm actually going to select our noise highlights layer and duplicate it. And let's drag this upwards just underneath the light flares layer. And let's rename this to energy diffusion. Next in the CC sphere effect on the energy diffusion layer, let's increase the radius a little bit. So we're kind of pushing this, this being pushed outwards just a little bit, probably to maybe about there. And I might also come up into the turbulent noise effect. Um, press U to reveal the keyframes and come to the last keyframe here. I'm actually going to jack up the contrast a little bit more and maybe a little bit more on the brightness. I just want like really frilly little bits of energy being floating off into the distance. And I might also for that open up the transform and maybe I'll scale it down just a little bit just so it looks a little bit more fine. And maybe I'll bring the CC sphere in just a touch. So we're just kind of just a little bit on the surface. So let's check this out. Cool. That's actually not too bad at all. Now I think I don't actually want the effect to be covering the inside of the sphere. And the easiest way to do that is just come up to four seconds where our energy ball is fully developed. Let's grab the ellipse tool and if you can't click into the center, make sure you have no effect selected 
and let's draw a mask right into the center of the sphere. So probably about there. Let's change the mask mode over to subtract. So we're just kind of taking the center of this diffusion out so that the center of the energy ball is nice and solid. And let's expand the mask properties and increase the mask feather. I'm also going to push this out a little bit on the expansion. So we're just getting these diffusion lines on the very outside. And still at four seconds, let's enable the mask path and let's come back and let's shrink this mask down. So we're kind of having this diffusion lines appear probably about there. You can kind of see them come in on the outside of the energy ball. So it's just adding just that little bit of intensity might actually increase the contrast even further. And again, just make sure you're doing that when you're on the keyframe for the contrast. Otherwise, this is going to go a little bit weird. So that's kind of just adding just that little bit of extra diffusion. If you now play this back, you can kind of see a little bit of this, this rim going on around the energy ball and kind of like this effect. But obviously, feel free to tweak this to your liking. Finally, the last thing I want to do with our effect is actually add a more solid rim around the outside. Now, you can actually see a fairly solid rim already, but it just, I don't know, it just doesn't look very interesting. It looks a little bit flat on the outside. So let's again collapse all of our layers and one more time, let's create a new solid. I am going to call this one Sphere Rim. Let's hit OK and again, let's drag this below the light flares layer because I really want the light flares to be at the very top. Let's temporarily disable the visibility and let's again use the ellipse tool. Make sure we add exactly four seconds where all of the other keyframes are ready. And let's add another mask right into the center of the composition. You can actually also press Alt and single quote to enable the grid. So you can kind of know exactly where you need to place it. And it's going to place us right in the center. Hold down Ctrl and Shift so the mask sits exactly in the center and scales uniformly. Let's just bring this out to exactly the outer edge of our energy ball. Alt and single quote to hide the grid. And the effect I'm now going to apply is one of my absolute favorites. It's the Saber effect from Video Copilot. Again, it's a free effect that you can download and you will find a link down in the description of the video. So let's simply grab the Saber effect and apply it to our sphere rim layer. Obviously, we're not gonna see anything because we have the visibility disabled. So let's re-enable the visibility and this is what Saber looks like. Obviously, this is not really what we're going for. So in the Saber effect, Let's expand the customized core settings and change the core type over from Saber to layer mask. So Saber will take the mask that we've drawn right around the outside of our energy ball and apply the Saber effect to that. Finally, let's change the mode from normal over to add to kind of add this on top of everything. And it's getting a little bit too bright. I'm also not a big fan of this default preset. So in the Saber effect, you can select from a huge amount of different presets. And the one that I personally thought looked kind of cool was the solar preset. So let's apply that. And again, it's just, it's a little bit too bright, right? It looks cool, but it's just, it's just a little bit too intense now. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower this core size here in the Saber effect just a little bit. So we just get this really fiery outside of the energy ball happening. But I'm finding that the noise layers themselves are probably a little bit too bright now that we're adding everything up. So I'm actually going to come down into my sphere noise. So this is the base noise layer. And let's press U to make sure we are on that last keyframe. Press J to jump forward to the previous keyframe. I'm just going to bring down the brightness just a little bit. So we're not overdoing it. I want it nice and bright, but I don't want to overkill it either. So I kind of want that to look really nice and solid. Maybe just a tiny bit more. So maybe about minus 15 or so. I want this to still feel like an energy ball, but I don't want it to be just fully blown out. That doesn't actually look too bad. Maybe I'll reselect my noise highlights layer and bring up the brightness on my turbulent noise effect and maybe a little bit more contrast. That way we get fewer but brighter highlights on our energy ball. And as I said, and as I keep saying all the time, just tweak this to your liking until you're really happy with this. The last thing we need to do, if we come back to the beginning, is you will find that, well, the Saber effect is visible all of the time. Obviously, we also need this to appear with our energy ball coming in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come to about five seconds or so, select the sphere rim layer, and let's place a keyframe on the core size. I might also reveal the opacity of this layer and set a keyframe on that. I'm just going to come back a little bit. So maybe about three and a half or so. And let's lower the opacity 
2.0 and the core size 2.0. Let's select both keyframes, press F9 to enable Bezier interpolation. And now what we should see is kind of just see that rim slowly kind of creep in right about there. Yeah, that looks much cooler. So let's rewind our composition and let's play back our energy ball effect. Cool, and that is looking pretty good. Now the timing I feel could definitely be a little bit faster, but we can always do that once we composite it back onto our original shot. But I do want this rim to come in a little bit quicker as well. It's just, it's taking a little bit too long to kind of kick in. So I'm just going to pull this forward and crunch this down so it just appears just that little bit quicker. And obviously color wise, it's up to you what colors you want. I don't mind this red, but I might actually shift this a little bit over more into maybe like a bluish green, just so it works a little bit better with that, just that energy feel and it doesn't feel quite as fiery. So maybe just a little bit of a greenish, green tinted blue. That's actually not too bad. You can obviously also just apply color grading layers to the whole thing and you know add VC color vibrance or other color adjustment effects to just make this your own. But I think for the energy ball itself, that actually looks pretty cool. So let's play this back one more time and then we can jump back and composite this into our original shot. Cool, I really like how that's looking. Now, the last thing I might do on this light flare itself, I might apply a hue and saturation effect to it. I'm going to shift the color of this layer a little bit. I'm just not a big fan of this blue. I definitely want it to be more green. I think I'll also bring down the saturation by quite a bit to make it blend in a little bit better, not stand out so much. So that looks a whole lot nicer already. So now that we've got our energy ball created, let's go back to the tutorial and composite this energy ball into Walter's hands. Just as a quick reminder, this is what our composition looked like. So Walter is just spawning the energy ball and then just throwing it in my face and I'm disintegrating. Now, because I've already done all of the tracking, this is actually quite simple, but I also don't want to spend too much time on this part of the tutorial. It was mainly around you creating the energy ball, but I also want to finish this with a little bit of a conclusion. So let's come back to our project. Let's drag our energy ball comp into our current composition. And there it is. Let's change the blend mode over to screen. I'm going to scale this layer down a little bit. So the size of the energy ball is a little bit more appropriate for the scene. And I'll place it right in Walter's hands. And let's just timing wise align this. So right here is probably when I want, yep, that's actually timing wise, it actually works out quite well. So this is where Walter spawns the energy ball. Let's just place it right in the middle there. That's kind of cool. And let's parent it to the Walter hand middle null layer that I've already tracked, but you can do this. This is really not difficult. It's just a simple motion track and you're just kind of parenting the layer to it. So that actually looks pretty good. Obviously towards the end, I haven't done anything with it. It just kind of gets stuck. But what I might do is right here, let's reveal the position, enable keyframes on the position, move forward maybe a few frames and just move this energy ball right through me. So it's kind of from there, it just kind of flies across. Obviously you want to enable motion blur on the composition and on the layer just so that when it gets flung, you kind of get this really nice motion blur happening here. So that's really nice. A few other things you may want to do. You may, for example, add some color grading to this energy ball using, for example, the free VC color vibrance effect. But again, you can use whatever color effects you prefer. I'm kind of liking this effect though. The green looks nice and cool already, but maybe I'll shift this a little bit more into the bluish green. Don't go too subtle. You know, if, if you're gonna make an energy ball, you may as well make it look nice and dramatic. And finally, the last thing I might want to apply is also just a glow effect. So I'm going to use stylized glow for that. And here it is very important that your project is set to 32 bits per channel. Otherwise, this might look a little bit low quality. I am going to jack up the glow radius by quite a lot, but maybe I'll bring down the intensity so it's not just totally blown out. I do want this to be pretty intense though. That's actually looking pretty good. So I'm going to rewind my composition hide all of my null objects, collapse all of my layers, and let's play back the final energy ball effect. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it, and share it with the world. If you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials just like this one and you're new here, please consider subscribing. 
And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.